Hey, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining in here on Patreon and YouTube. All right, well, today we are going to do our final video here on the uh, Colossal 1200. So let's open this up. I just shut it down so that I could actually hear the uh, <laughs> hear myself over the uh, fans for the um, uh, p -p -p load tester. So anyways, so let's open this up. Let's take a sneak peek here at what's going on in the inside. So yeah, it's kind of difficult, but let me let me unhook it that way I can. Uh, okay. And there we go. That way I can turn the lights and stuff back on here in just a second on this. So anyhow, we finished this up and uh Pretty, uh, pretty pleased with it, actually, on the overall. But let's, uh, let's turn this on. All right. So now we've got everything powered up, and as it goes along, you'll start seeing some of the uh, green LEDs go out, which is perfectly normal. Yep, there's one, several of them here. So we've got one on over here, and I think we've got one, yeah. We got one on this bank as well. So the way I've set this up was a little different. Um, you know, we've got uh, two banks is what I did, and 1200 should be should be good for here in the shop, I think. But uh, you know, we actually mounted these to the side and went up. Like I said, we could actually go up higher, especially on this side. You know, I don't have anything down at the bottom, so we could actually put a couple more modules down low and. Uh, probably if I would rearrange these, I could actually fit probably three more on this side. Uh, this side, um, I know I can fit at least one more, mainly because of the fact that I have to have room over on this side because of the uh, circuit breaker so that I've got just enough room uh, so that there's clearance and everything. So uh, we're at the bottom limit on the tier for this side. However, if we would redesign a portion of this, we could actually go ahead and move the fan from the bottom, put it up on the top, and uh, I'd probably have to change how I've got the meters and stuff and probably some positioning in order to go ahead and stack directly into the center. But we could actually stack more at a later date. If we wanted, we could actually come right up here on the side and mount several more here and same here. But this one, I went ahead and included a couple of different things into this that, uh, you don't normally see. Uh, you will on certain videos of people that build really big stuff. Um, but anyways, we went ahead and we put uh, two uh, two contactors in there. I've had these for several years, and um, you know I bought them with the intentions of building something like this, and I've got others on hand. But uh, I haven't had had a lot of call for them, so I thought you know. This would be a perfect, you know, perfect project for this. So I went ahead and I incorporated, you know, two main, uh, two, two contactors in here. And I set the contactors up on 220 so that uh, when the uh, main switch is flipped, I can actually energize the uh, contactors, pull down, and everything comes to life. So we've also got a speed control here that I went ahead and put in for the fan. And that way, if for some reason I'm doing certain tests or what have you, I can turn this down to where it's just barely running like right there. It's still running, but I don't know if you can hear that on the microphone or not. So we've got plenty of air that's gonna be coming into the cabinet, but I wanted, I wanted an updraft fan in this application. Reason why is because this is gonna sit on the floor and the concrete stays pretty cool all the time. So I'm gonna have cool air that's actually gonna be sucked up from the bottom up into the cabinet and then blow out through the uh, vents on the side. Now it does have a hole in the middle where if I wanted to, I could put an exhaust fan there as well and have a constant <clears throat> constant draw. But uh, because I've got enough spacing in between here, because I've got almost enough for finger width in between here, 
So as you can see, I can put my fingernail in between there. So, you know, I did that so that I've got plenty of, you know, plenty of air that can get in between these modules and keep these modules cool because I wanted something that was going to have a long, uh, long life. And then over here in the corner, we have a, a small three amp power supply. And this is also ran on either 110 or 220 um, in this particular circumstance. So I've got this wired up to a switch, and this runs the LEDs, or the neon, I should say. So, you know, that's part of the part of the thing is I wanted the uh, LED, <clears throat> LEDs, which is a, you know, it's an LED strip, but it's actually kind of a, a neon strip that is made with LEDs that I've used here on the bottom as well as on the top. And I wanted that on its own supply so that I know that it couldn't create any kind of noise that would get into my system. So that was part of the, you know, uh, part of the reasoning behind that. And then uh, I put a couple of small, a couple of small stiffening capacitors uh, also located back here. Um, that we've got tied into our main buses back here for the uh, positive and the negative. Again, overkill. I did use four gauge just because I had some that was already pre-cut for some other projects that fell through. So I went ahead and, and used it so I didn't have to pull anything off the roll. But uh, it's way overkill for, for this project, but it sure does make for a wonderful supply. All right, so you're gonna see we've got two meters here in the middle. Uh, the first one here in, uh, tells me what my line current is, or my line voltage, excuse me, my line voltage is, and then shows me what frequency. So this way I can see what my, what my incoming voltage is at all times <clears throat> and make sure that I'm still running out on uh, peak efficiency at 60 Hertz. And you, you'll see this change just a little bit. Generally around here, it'll run between 59 and 60. Most of the time it does hold right at the 60 Hertz. And our secondary meter here obviously shows our uh, DC voltage out and then our amperage. So for the current, so. Start fan up just a little bit where I can start to hear it. There we go. All right, well, let's close this thing up. Um, oh, before I forget, also, as you see here, this is all Teflon braid, uh, Teflon wire, and this is the uh, high current, high current wire. And the reason why I call it high current is because it is a nickel based wire. So you can draw a little bit more current. Um, this is actually used in aerospace technology. So, um, you know, I definitely want to give a shout out to my uh, vendor for uh, supplying me with this wire as well. But uh, yeah, we went ahead and put uh, uh, ferrite beads on all the AC wires individually here, as well as on the other side. There's also ferrites for another uh, trap on the AC that's not being able to be shown right at the moment because it's kind of a, kind of in a hidden spot back up underneath here. But let's get started. Let's go ahead and do the load test. Show you what this little girl's going to do here. So. All right. Now you can see my ugly mug in the uh, glass. <laughs> All right, guys. So let's get back here. All right. Let me hook up the uh, thousand amp load tester here. I can get back on that. Try to get as good a bite as I can. All right, so let's swing over here real quick and we'll show you what the uh, settings are here on the load tester because I'm not going to be able to fit everything in here. All right, so you'll see our meter here is still set at zero, which it was when we moved the camera. We're at 14.5 volts here. 
which is the same as what we have. Do a little quick test here, and then I'll show you on the front of the uh, supply as well. So we'll just tickle it just a little bit. That's about uh, about 100 amps, 600, and peg. <laughs> All right, so let's go over here. Try to get that into view good for you guys. All right. Start bringing this up. There's about 70 amps. All right, so let's jack this up here. Back it off just a little bit. All right, so I know that if I keep that crank too long, I'll kick out my circuit breaker because I've only got a 60 amp in the uh, panel. So bring it up a little more time here. Yep, I'm just about to shut my <laughs> shut that off. But uh, you know, definitely will handle peaks of about 1500 and uh, go from there. We do have this set up on load sharing as well. So we're able to handle just about anything that it can throw at it. Like I said, the only thing I'd like to do is I'd like to get uh, a larger circuit breaker put in, but that's, that's as big as I had in the cabinet um, in my circuit panel at the time. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. We look forward to seeing you more on our YouTube and our Patreon. And we will catch you on the next live feed or on the next video.